God bless America. Hello, everybody. I am the talk radio protege. This is the protege program. We're just waiting on the green light to drop into Normandy this afternoon. And I hope you all have had a wonderful day. And today I thought I would take this white privilege test. And by take, I do not mean take it seriously. I do mean uh, take it apart for the garbage that it is. But before I do that, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this video. I hope that you enjoy, and when we get to the end, I hope you'll leave a like and subscribe. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's see. Oh, uh, what is this? Peggy McIntosh, Associate Director of the Wellesley College Center for Research on Women. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm sure this won't be garbage. Describes white privilege as Quote, an invisible package of unearned assets which I can count on cashing in each day, but about which I was, quote unquote, meant to remain oblivious. White privilege is like an invisible, weightless knapsack of special provisions, maps, passports, code books, visas, clothes, tools, and blank checks. <laughs> well, I can guarantee you I haven't got my white privilege check in years. Like, since the day I was born, I haven't been given any white privilege checks. Uh, I don't think I've been given any white privilege maps or passports, for that matter. Code books, visas, I, I can't say that I've received any of those. But, uh, this person wants to put all of that to the test. The following are examples of ways white individuals have privilege because they are white. Please read the list and place a check next to the privileges that apply to you or that you have encountered. At the end, try to at least list two, or sorry, try to list at least two more ways you have privilege based on your race. Well, since we're talking about intersectionality and white privilege, I can guarantee you that at least half of these items would not be applicable to white people if they were placed in a non-white majority country. So let's see if this really is the white privilege checklist. Number one, I can arrange to be in the company of people of my race most of the time. All right, well, first of all, why would you be arranging to be in the company of people of your race? Am I going out of my way to arrange to be in the company of people of my race? Because if I call up the first, or, you know, okay, here we go. Say within a 10 mile radius of where I live, if I were to call uh, 10 random people in that area, is that arranging to be in the company of people of my race? Or is arranging to be in the company of people of my race me going out of my way to find people of my race to be in the company in. Because that's two different things. One of those could be racism. One of those is, by definition, not racism. If I, also, if I was in Japan, then this would not apply to me. But it just so happens to be because I'm a white person living in the United States of America, in a specific part mind you, of the United States of America, that if I were to call 10 people within a 10 mile radius of where I live, they would probably be white. And that's not my fault. That's not, uh, that's just the geographics of where I live. I don't think that's white privilege. I think that's called demographics. I don't think I, and if this is white privilege, what do you want me to do about it? What am I supposed to do as a white person to fix this? Should I arrange to be in the company of people based on where I live? Should I arrange to be in the company of people based on them not looking like me? What am I supposed to do to remedy this if this is white privilege? Moving on, number two. I can go shopping alone most of the time, pretty well assured that I will not be followed or harassed. All right. If this does apply to me, whose fault is it? Is it my fault? 
that uh, that I get harassed when I go shopping? Do I choose to dress in a way that gets me followed and harassed while I'm shopping? This reminds me of that episode from The Office where, uh, if you've seen The Office, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, one white male character go goes into the mall and describes the situation. He says, I was looking into a window and I saw this figurine that I wanted to buy and I knocked on the door and asked to be let in and they and the employers were pointing at me and wouldn't let me in and they started taking pictures of me and I felt, you know, very discriminated against. And then, uh, you know, they go to have their revenge against that store and they say, well, yes, we didn't let him in before because he looked terrifying and they show him a picture and he has red stains on his shirts and, and on his hands and all of that. So, uh, being harassed while shopping is contextual. It may be based on race, but it may be because uh, people that look like you have been antagonizing that store. And that's not your fault, but all that it, that takes is, you know, a demonstration of uh, your not being a bad person. And, you know, that's just the fact that there are bad people in the world that make you have to do that. And it's unfortunate. It's not fair to an individual to be, uh, to be profiled based on what other people have done. But it is unfortunate. You know, this also reminds me of um, a case that I saw recently. I believe it was in Australia, where a store owner was posting uh, or posted a sign on his door that said "No black people allowed in the store." And you know, everybody jumped on that, said that's racist. And then video footage comes out of black teenagers going into his store and uh, stealing things blatantly in front of the store owner, antagonizing the store owner. So. This item is entirely uh, contextual. It has nothing whatsoever to do with race. And if it does have anything to do with race, then it is acknowledging the fact that there are certain racial demographics of the population that are committing crime on levels that are above the average of everybody else in the pop, of every other demographic of the population. So you're either acknowledging that certain uh, demographics have a problem with crime, or you're saying that it's everybody else that's uh, racist for acknowledging those uh, that demographic's problem. Moving on, number three. I can turn on the television or open to the front page of the paper and see people of my race widely represented. Would that be indicative of those races' interest in pursuing those careers, or is it indicative of the the owners and managers of those organizations um, choosing based on race? Also, you don't say anything about how these people are represented. <laughs> I'm about to get really racist on you guys. If you live in a predominantly black neighborhood and you turn on your local news organization, which is anchored by white people, and they report on the news of your neighborhood that a whole bunch of uh, that people in your neighborhood are committing crime, and they show all of these people that look like you, is that is that the representation that you're looking for? Is that uh, the the right privilege card that is to be played? Because I don't think. I don't think that's exactly what this, uh, what the author of this test had in mind uh, when they were writing about <laughs> about people being represented on television that looked like me. Uh, but anyway, you know, there's a uh, that demonstrates the difference between uh, you know the regressive social justice warriors and uh, everyone else. You know, when people look at a uh, a job and break down the demographics and they see that it's may or may not be however however it's represented they say you know this is people choose to go into these uh, into these occupations that's how normal people think 
Social justice warriors, on the other hand, if they don't see perfect, uh, perfectly equal distributions of demographics, they say, well, it's obviously because the people that run the show hate everybody else. Which one of these is more, uh, more likely? It reminds me of the saying, never attribute to malice what you could attribute to incompetence. And in the case of equally distributing people based on demographics, you could say that choosing a meritocracy over a raceocracy would be incompetence in the eyes of the social justice warrior. Moving on, number four. When I'm told about our national, our uh, wow, excuse me. When I am told about our national heritage about, or about civilization, I am shown that people of my color made it what it is. Well, okay, when you're living in a predominantly white country, you probably don't have a predominantly black group of people that set it up and made it what it is. The national heritage of the United States of America is majority white because a majority white people set it up. Is it the fault of a white person that, uh, that this happened? What do you want white people to do to remedy that situation? Do you want us to dig into the obscure black people that may have ha played a role in setting up the country as it exists? Or do you want us to study the national heritage of other of uh, black countries to see how uh, black people set up the countries that exist over there? We could look at Zimbabwe, we could look at Tanzania, we could look at Nigeria. We could look at some other countries. We could look at uh, Japan or China. We could look at Vietnam. Uh, you know, those strident examples of socialism. We could look at North Korea. Uh, or we could look at how the ideas that went into the country have made the country what it is. And it's the ideas that were held by the people that were of whatever demographic they happened to be that made the country what it is. Let me just check my time here real quick. Okay, I'm not making it through this very fast. I'll try to step it up. Uh, number five, I can be sure that my children will be given curricular materials that testify to the existence of their race. What curricular materials would you like to be given? World history is the only example that I can think of where we would, where it's necessary Excuse me. World history is the only curriculum that I can think of that necessitates testifying to the existence of all races. Because it's the only curriculum where you're going to talk about people from all kinds of demographics. You know, United States history is going to testify about the people that uh, were around for the historical events that happened in the United States. When founded, there weren't a lot of Chinese people in the 13 colonies. There weren't a lot of Arabs in the 13 colonies. There were majority whites and there were blacks, the majority of who were slaves. That's the history of the United States from the founding, is you had the 13 colonies, which were majority English colonies, and you went from there. Uh, Chinese people come into play when you make it to the West Coast and you start talking about uh, immigration to the West Coast. Uh, Hispanics start coming into play really after the, their wars for independence, after they, after uh, the Central American and Southern American countries separated from uh, mostly the Spanish and uh, some of the Portuguese. That's where uh, the history comes into play in those areas. When talking about the United States, you need to talk about the people that were present, not the imaginary people that you wish were present. Moving on, number six. I can go into a music, sh music shop and count on finding the music of my race represented into a supermarket and find the food that I grew up with, into a hairdresser shop and find someone who can deal with my hair. Well, when you're in the United States, you ought to be able to expect to see American food, music, and hairstyles. So if you want a Vietnamese hairstyle, you need to go and find a Vietnamese barber shop. If you go into an American barber shop, you need to expect an American hairdo. I'm sorry, that's 
the United States of America. When it comes to music, look at the Billboard Top 100 hits. The music, the music of the Top 100 American Billboard hits is white and black. And there's not a lot of Arabs there because we like music. We don't like whatever Muslims call music. There are not a lot of Indians there because for the most part Americans like music with words they can understand. You know, call me crazy, there's not a lot of Latino music hitting the top 100 billboard charts because Americans like to read the lyrics of the songs they're listening to and understand them. I'm gonna move, go ahead and move on. When I, whether I use checks, credit cards, or cash, I can count on my skin color not to work against the appearance of financial responsibility. Are you saying to me that when a black person holds out a $100 bill, there are businesses that will not take it because you're black? That's not how United States currency works. When it comes to checks, most people don't take checks anymore anyway. This is not an issue. This is a straw man. Credit cards. If you swipe your credit card and it doesn't go through, businesses won't take it and it doesn't matter on your race. If I, as a white person, go into a business and swipe my credit card and it gets declined, they don't just wink and nod and hand me my consumer products anyway. This is not how the market works. This is stupid. I refuse to answer number seven. Number eight. I am not a way, I, excuse me, I am not made acutely aware that my shape, bearing, or body odor will be taken as a reflection on my race. No, that's taken as a reflection on you as a person. This is not an issue. Number nine, I can worry about racism without being seen as self-interested or self-seeking. Okay, I'll give you this one. The only reason that that is right now, though, is because the only form of acceptable racism left in the Western world is racism against white people. And so when white people pretend to be cared about race, or when white people act like they're cared about, like they care about racism, let me get my words out, nobody thinks about, well, maybe they're talking about racism against white people because that's seen as an acceptable form of racism. Moving right along. Number 10, I can take a job or enroll in college with affirmative action policy without having my coworkers or peers assume I got it because of my race. All right, let me make sure I understand this statement. I can take a job or enroll at a college with an affirmative action policy. What is affirmative action policy supposed to do? Affirmative action positions are supposed to be reserved for Jeopardy theme playing here non-white people, specifically black people, because Asians seem to get the short end of the stick when it comes to affirmative action, too. So you'll excuse reasonable people when you show up at an affirmative action school or workplace and they wonder if you got the position because of affirmative action. I'm going to slow down for a moment here while I look for a place to pull in and eat and hope that the place I'm looking for isn't gone. Okay, there it is. Moving on. Number 11. I can be late to a meeting without having the lateness reflect on my race. That depends. Is the meeting you're going to uh, for work? Or is the meeting you're going to for funsies? Because if the meeting you're going to is for work, you can't be late to that meeting. It doesn't matter what your race is. If the meeting you're going to is for funsies, and excuse me, if people of this demographic show up late to a meeting and then say, I'm running on demographic time, that, that kind of perpetuates the stereotype by the demographic that is not supposed to be perpetuating the stereotype. Let me just check my time real quick and make sure I'm doing okay. Okay, I got... Ten, about 10 minutes left to make it through the rest of these. I can choose a public accommodation without fearing that people of my race cannot get in or will be mistreated. 
anybody can do that. Public accommodations are for everyone. Uh, I believe there's a law that says public accommodations uh, cannot discriminate against anybody of any race. So that's a non-issue. Number 13. I am never asked to speak for all people, for all of the people of my racial group. You know, white people don't ask black people to speak for everybody of a racial group unless you work for BuzzFeed. Black people either do that themselves or they call any black person that doesn't toe the black demographic party line and Uncle Tom or not a real black person. So it's because of black people that any black person is assumed to speak for all of black people. It's because 89% of black people vote for Democrats every single freaking presidential election that we just kind of assume that black people speak for all black people. Excuse me for acknowledging reality. Number 14. I can be pretty sure that if I ask to talk to with the person in charge, I will be facing a person of my race. Depends on the business you go to and the place of the world that you're living in. If you go to a predominantly black neighborhood, you go into a uh, business that could have uh, that that has a very wide base of demographics that could be running that business and ask to see the manager, you're probably going to see the uh, person that lives in that area that's running that business. Uh, if you go to a big city, go to a big corporation and ask to see the manager, you're probably going to see the person that's best qualified for the job that lives the closest in that area. They might not fit the demographics if it's a big enough company. So this is a non-issue. Number 15, if a traffic cop pulls me over or if the IRS audits my tax return, I can be sh sure I haven't been signaled out, singled out because of my race. Well, no, the IRS singles people out because of their political affiliation. <coughs> Targeting conservatives. Uh, excuse me. Uh, if a traffic cop pulls me over, uh, been singled out because of my race. Uh, people tell horror stories about being... Uh, about driving while black, so I think I'll give that one to you. You know, one half, or one and a half out of 15, you're not doing so good so far. You just make sure I still got time. Eight minutes. Uh, moving on. I can easily buy... <laughs> wait! 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 <laughs> I can easily be why, as in purchase, posters, postcards, picture books, greeting cards, dolls, toys, and children's magazines featuring people of my race. <laughs> do, do you teach students? <laughs> buy is spelled B U Y, first of all. Second of all, Yes, you can. People can find posters, postcards, picture books, greeting cards, dolls, toys, and children's magazines featuring people of their race. Um, the people that make those kinds of things are pretty progressive about that these days. Uh, number 17. I can choose blemish co cover or bandages in quote unquote flesh color and have them more or less match my skin. Well, the fellow that invented bandages. When he decided, when we, he was deciding what flesh color was going to be, he was he probably just looked at his skin, said, "Yeah, that looks like flesh to me," and then called it flesh. If a white person invented bandages, then that's not a crime. I'm sorry, this is a non-issue. This is a straw man issue. Second of all, if we had 15 different flesh-colored bandages, then it would be awful confusing to send someone to the supermarket and tell them to get flesh-colored bandages. I'm moving on. That's not even a serious issue. 18. I can do well in a challenging situation without being called a credit to my race. Well, when the entire left and your entire demographic demands that when you do well in a challenging situation, it be a credit to your race then yes, we're going to do that. When... I apologize for reality, but when your demographic has a hard time doing something, 
then yes, we're going to make give that a credit to you and say you've overcome an obstacle. That you should be uh, held up as a beacon to other people saying, look, you can do it too because this person made it. Moving on. I can walk into a classroom and know that I will not be the only member of my race. It depends on where you go to school. If you go to a school in... Uh, sit in the middle, or uh, rather in Washington State, there's probably not going to be a lot of colored people of color there. There's probably not going to be a lot of black people there. If you go to a school in a part of the country where uh, the surrounding counties are 90% black, there's probably going to be a majority black people there. Number 20. Or, oh, 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 I forgot. I almost forgot this one. Having just recently graduated from an engineering program, it also depends on what uh, major you choose. If you're a female and you enroll in mechanical engineering, you will probably be able to count on one hand the number of females in the mechanical engineering program. That's not the fault of the college. That's not the fault of the men in the engineering program. That is because women choose chemical engineering. And I can tell you this because I have stood outside of a classroom that waiting for the chemical, uh, chemistry class inside to dismiss. And when they do, it's a stream of nothing but women. It depends on where you go to school and what major you choose. This not a race, not a race issue whatsoever. Number 20, I can enroll in a class at a college and be sure that the majority of my professors will be of my race. Now you've contradicted yourself. Where was, where'd it go? The affirmative action one. I'm going to find it. It's up here somewhere. Where'd it go? I forgot. You you said in an earlier question that you don't want people to question you based on affirmative action. And then you demand that a majority of my professors will be of my race. These are totally contradicting issues. Do you want me to take this quiz checklist seriously or not? Because this one, I can't. And I'm just about out of time on this video. I, I do apologize for uh, checking my time as I went, but I really didn't want to run over and have to re-record this whole thing. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for, uh, for making it to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, I, there's a subscribe button down below that I hope you'll take the time to uh, click on, maybe even leave a like, and let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear uh, what my viewers have to say. Um, I'm uploading videos every weekday, so I hope you'll come back and uh, see me in the future. Maybe even come back and check out some of my past videos. Thank you so much for watching once again. Have a fantastic evening and a great day tomorrow. This is the Talk Radio Protégé. Good night and God bless.